position has um, a couple different levels. Systemically, it's to look out big picture and see what sort of improvements it can make for the LGBTQ community uh, and maybe look for uh, legislation. And then the other part is one-on-one -on -one interactions with folks. WDVA sees everyone, um, but you may not feel comfortable just seeing anyone. WDVA has said, we have someone here who is here for you on your behalf. Um, and is a, a friendly face for you to talk to, uh, someone you can engage with, someone who's looking out for you. Her role is to outreach to the LGBTQ veterans community to identify veterans uh, who might benefit from applying for federal and state veterans benefits, but also uh, working with our partners in the community, nonprofit organizations and other organizations that we partner with. That involves working with veterans individually, but also includes looking at things from a systems perspective. My first six months in the job, what I was doing is reaching out and letting people know that I exist and really just connecting with the big agencies um, so that they know when they get folks that come in the door that they have someone that they can talk to. And I might just be a connector to other services. Like you don't have to use me. You can see a, a service officer that may be closer to you. You might feel comfortable, you know, might be easier so you don't have to come all the way over here. And so I, I have someone right now in Seattle who knows they can go see someone else, um, but they feel more comfortable talking with me. Uh, it's, it's about more than just the benefits though. It's also about the recognition and honor of that uh, veteran status. Uh, many veterans, members of the LGBT community were separated from the military with less than a full honorable discharge due to the legacy of don't ask, don't tell and, and prior policies. You may not have reached out to talk to somebody because you, you don't feel comfortable. You may not have been treated as well as you would like to, especially if you reach back to like, um, don't ask, don't tell policies. One of the things you see with like, don't ask, don't tell is you see folks who they've been told, hey, because of who you are, you don't, you are not a veteran. You'll find folks who have good conduct medals, um, who, who have been kicked out with less than honorable um, discharges. And that's hurtful. I mean, what does that say about your service when you, you think you've been doing a service to the nation um, and all of a sudden you've been told, no, actually you're not even a veteran because you don't qualify um, because you're discharged. Um, yeah, so really want to address those folks <laughs> and let them know that, yes, come see me. Uh, we'll get you the, the what you need. Um, I'll connect you to the right people or I'll help you personally uh, get what you need. When people ask me, like, tell me about what you have in your program. I don't have anything in my program. Like, th there is no bucket of resources for you. It's the same that everyone else gets. The difference is I'm looking out for the community and that friendly face for you to come and see so that you feel comfortable. If there have been unique challenges in the past, like don't ask, don't tell, I can have an understanding of that and be able to, to really understand what you're going through um, and then recommend those solutions. You don't have to come see me. I'm happy that you come and see me, but everyone here is more than happy to assist you. As an organization, this is something that is near and dear to the hearts of just helping people. It's, it's, I think people come here to work because they want to help people. Um, and so come in and see somebody. Even if it's not me, come in and see somebody. We're here to help. <laughs>